I'm Dane Rose, and in this video, I'm going to walk you through the design process each step of the way, since you won't be familiar with my process, and perhaps landscape design uh, is a new experience for you. The first step, and it's one of the most important, is I will email you my landscape questionnaire. And the reason for that is landscaping is incredibly complex. You've got lighting, you've got drainage, you've got resale value to consider, you've got grading, you've got plant amending preparation, but you've also got things like driveway design, parking, uh, you've got safety issues and steps and access to the front door, uh, and a number of other things. In order to think through that process efficiently, uh, it's useful to have an overview. Now, there are a number of different styles of designers, and my approach is a listening style. And what I mean by that is my goal is not so much to impose my taste on your garden, but rather to understand you well enough to design something that I think you would design if you had my 27 years of expertise and understood all the costs, efficiencies, and techniques. Uh, but the test of that is after I go over the answers to the questionnaire with you on site, we walk around together. Now, it's very common for clients to approach me and say, well, you know, I'd like to do something with the side garden. Let's design that. And then maybe next year or the year after, we'll do some things in the back. We'll maybe add a hot tub. Then we're going to think about the driveway later on. But these are all separate things. Let's just focus on this side garden. Now, the problem with this approach is twofold. The first one is practical. In order for this part of the garden to work, there are connections. There may be a connection in drainage. There may be a connection in electrical lines or gas lines or uh, some other thing. Maybe you need to get heavy equipment into the back garden. And if you landscape the front garden and cut off access, you've got to do all that by hand at two or three times the cost. And so even though you may be installing a small stage you know, for this year, it's valuable to take a couple of hours and look at the project as a whole so that you don't end up spending thousands of dollars unnecessarily to redo bits or um, miss an opportunity. Perhaps there was a trench open and if only you had known that that's the way landscaping worked, you would have run a lighting wire or a gas line or a drainage pipe in that same trench uh, and saved yourself a lot of hassle later. Now, the other uh, reason to do the design as an overview, as a whole, and then install it in stages, is to avoid the hodgepodge problem. Uh, it's very common for clients to contact me after 5, 10, 20 years of doing their own projects in bits and pieces. The trouble is, when it's all done, it doesn't feel like one mind intelligently designed the whole. It feels exactly like it was, that this bit was thought of separately, and then this bit is a completely different style, and this bit doesn't tie in. And so you don't get that synergy, the feeling that the landscape uh, is an expression of the house, and that there was one mind involved in the entire project. And so uh, I always begin a design relationship by looking at anything that's on the horizon uh, and understanding the landscape as a whole because talk is incredibly cheap. And this brings up 
something just to be aware of. The most expensive mistake that you can make, and it's a common one, is to pay someone, maybe even get a great deal on it, to put the wrong thing in, discover months or years later that it is the wrong thing, and pay someone else, maybe at a good price, to take it out again, and then pay someone else or the same person to put the right thing back in its place. You've paid for something, paid to undo it, and then paid to do it correctly. This is so common and so expensive compared to taking a couple of hours uh, to go over that overview that I don't feel like I'm doing clients a favor, even though it's normal to want to you know, zero in and not have to think of everything else. So I look at the garden as a whole. And once I've established that what the current project is, is not going to tie in, or if it is that we're doing it in a way that we're not shooting you in the foot for your future projects, uh, then we'll zero in on the stage at hand and uh, we'll look at lines for the hardscape. I'll use spray painted chalk because it's easier for you and I to visualize where a wall might go or where a pathway or a sod or you know artificial grass or whatever it is. It's easier to see where those things will go on the ground themselves and spray chalk which washes away gives you a really clear indicator when you're standing there. Now, once we, we have the lines, we then need to look at textures and materials. So, you know, it's an incredibly different cost to do, you know, a square mortared imported stone versus uh, a round dry stack wall from, you know, using Sonoma Fieldstone, for example. You might be looking at 500% difference in cost, you know, in that one decision alone. So it's important not just to look at the abstract, but to make sure that we're on the same page for the materials that would be used that you like, and for you to understand what they cost. And this is an important part of the design decision because you may like the idea you might like this idea, this idea, this idea, and this idea, but decide that that last idea isn't worth the money to you. And you can't make that decision without knowing what it costs. It's one of the things I like about being an integrated uh, designer and installer is that uh, I stay with you from this initial you know, meeting. Usually that first meeting uh, takes about four hours, give or take. Uh, go over the questionnaire, take a tour of the whole site, get to know you, look at the possibilities, look at their rough costs, uh, get feedback from you, and determine a direction to move forward in. These four hours are some of the most valuable hours, in my opinion, that you and I will spend in the entire project because we're looking at big picture things. And those big ideas may take five minutes to map out what do you think about this or have you considered this or did you know this was a possibility. And almost always the job of a good designer is to show you things that are valuable, that are cost effective, that you didn't know existed. And it's not your job to be able to look at a landscape a thousand different ways and know all the different costs. That's what you want a designer for. Now at the same time, what you never want to give to your designer is designated taste. You are the one who knows what you like. And so you don't want a designer to tell you what you should do, ignoring your own taste. The one exception in, you know, to this is when you're fixing a property up to sell. I've 
interviewed real estate agents. I've talked to people who have bought the homes of the landscapes that I've installed and designed. I've talked with appraisers. Uh, I've built, designed, and sold houses. And so I understand what 80% of the market is going to love. And so if you're hiring me to maximize property uh, real estate value, one gentleman who flips houses told me he made more money than he's ever made uh, after we did a big redo project. And he had told me, this is for resale. Now, if it's for resale, uh, you're probably better off going with my suggestions. But if it's for you, it doesn't matter what the neighbors think or what someone else wants. Uh, it should be your personal garden. Now, uh, what happens next is that I will produce a contract and provide you with a free bid. And this will break down every idea in detail and we'll go over it and you get to decide, I like to do you know, this one or this one, or uh, you know, we'll do it in these stages or these stages uh, based on your cash flow. The reason that I separate the design from the installation, even though I install the vast majority of the designs that I create, is I always want you to be comfortable to get other bids, to be able to do the work yourself if you'd like. I can be a consultant uh, you know, on your project to help you do it yourself. Um, and I want you to feel free to use any of the design ideas or all of them that you've paid for. Now, at this point, this is the valuable and also the cheap portion of the design. It's kind of ironic that, you know, in that first three, four hours, uh, a tremendous amount of the most important ideas get discussed. Uh, most of my clients will proceed right from those ideas and some sketches and looking at photos into a project. But if you need county or city approval, all those ideas have to be turned into scaled formal drawings or blueprints. And that ironically takes more time than it does to develop the idea. That's why I call it the lower value but more expensive uh, area of design. Now I will do drawings and blueprints for any client that needs that. But most of my clients will go straight from these ideas into a clearly defined contract and bid. Um, and then what I'll do with the plants, because you can't, uh, you can't design plants in detail before the hardscape is built without formal drawings. What I'll do with the plants is I'll set budgets. You'll tell me I want to have this garden look mature in one year, in three years, in five years. Uh, if you can wait three to five years, uh, you can save a lot of money on plants because you can get tiny plants and wait for them to grow in. It's a terrific return on investment. If you're impatient and want to spend five you know, times the money on, on plants to have it all look instant, you can do that too. That affects the budget. So once I understand how rapidly the garden needs to be and feel mature, uh, I give budgets for each of the area, the, the plant material, and budgets to plant them. Once the hardscape is built, once you can see what I have seen all along in my mind and we're on the same page and the soil is amended, then we have another design session. And it's a session in which we go through a short list of plants. You know, does it need to be deer resistant? Does it need to be drought tolerant? Does it need to be low maintenance? Does it need to have favorite colors? Does it need to be this theme or that theme? We go through the, the theme. We pick out a selection of all the plants that you and I like that work in that theme and we discuss where they go approximately in the beds. I then put together the plant order using the budget 
uh, we decided on for plants and planting. And I set all the plants out in pots in the ground. Now what I love about this compared to the formal drawing approach is that you cannot make a mistake. Meaning you're looking right at the plant, it's a foot above the ground, laid out exactly what it will look like a foot lower once it's all planted. So it's a great feedback time to make sure that you actually really like the plants that you've chosen, the plants that we've talked about, and it's, a it's an easy time to make a few changes. We can say, let's group these a little bit differently here and do it together on the spot. When we're satisfied, then these plants go in the ground and they look exactly like they did above the ground, just a foot lower, no errors. I love that process. So this entire process from the questionnaire to you know, the overview, to the you know, installation and plants, is all designed around efficiency. Uh, as efficient as it possibly can be without wasting money and making mistakes. Because talk is cheap, mistakes are expensive. Now I do this process hourly at $175 an hour. And a typical design will cost somewhere between $700 and, you know, on, a, on an estate where we're doing a lot of discussions and revisions, you know, we might spend two or $3,000. But this is considerably less expensive than the approach of formal drawings, which can double or triple those costs because we have to take a lot of detailed measurements, et cetera. But that's an overview, and you are in the driver's seat, meaning you can stop the process at any time, you can ask any questions, and in order to save you money asking familiar questions, meaning most of the questions I get asked are the same questions over and over again, uh, just by different people. I've written two books. One is Successfully Landscaping Your Marin Home. It's an all textbook and it contains 80% of the technical information that I rely on every day. The other is Marin Landscape Design. It's an all graphics book with a few notes in it. Uh, and it has over 600 images of local materials, of how different people have built walls in Marin, different fence styles in Marin, garage doors in Marin, mailboxes in Marin. And the purpose of this is, again, not to impose my uh, judgment on this is a good look or that's a good look, but rather to show you what's out there. And then you can say, I like a fence with this color in this photo, with that design here, with this kind of garage door, and we can collaborate and you know, make sure that it, it fits together somewhat cohesively. Um, but that book uh, is, you know, both books were kind of written to save you some time, to save you some money. So that's the design process in a nutshell. And at this point, if you'd like to proceed, um, first step is fill out the landscape questionnaire. The second step is uh, to schedule a four hour window We'll use as much of it as we need uh, to kind of go through those initial big ideas and go over the questionnaire. Uh, and uh, we can then, you know, you can then decide at that point. Some people want formal drawings just because, um, you know, even though they can understand what we're talking about. You'll have that option. But that's the uh, design process. And if you want a more detailed design estimate, um, just ask me to come out to your house and I'll look at it, say hello, and give you a detailed, you know, range of, of design costs. But it's, you know, 80, 90 percent of the design work that I do for clients is less than $2,000. Uh, it's usually in the 17 or the 700 to, you know, $1,800 range. Uh, just depends on the time that we take, the, the size of the project, the complexity of the project. Um, and I look forward to working with you.